الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says Am yaquluna aftarah Or maybe they say you Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam You invented This Quran You fabricated it from yourself If that is what they say Then you should reply by saying what Qul Fa'atu bi ashri suwarim Min mithlihi Then bring Ten surahs which are like eight. Wad'u man istatu'atum min dunillahi in kuntum sadiqin. And call on any helpers to help you in that. If you're really truthful that this Quran has been invented by Muhammad, the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is one person. If he can do that, then obviously you can do it also. And you are a group and you are a whole nation. And call whatever you want. So that was the challenge just given and you say like in Surah Al-Baqarah Allah gave the challenge of one verse, one, one surah. One surah, not ten, one surah. And Allah said you cannot do it. Now here, look at the reply, subhanAllah. Look at the reply. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now this is the next verse, number 14. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكُمْ فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكُمْ And if they do not respond to you, meaning in this challenge you gave, this challenge you gave, you say I invented it, then you bring something like it, just 10, 10 surahs out of 114. Bring less than 10% of it and call on anyone you want. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكُمْ So if they don't respond to the challenge you gave, then you should know something. Fa'alam, then you should know. Fa'alamu, you should know what? Now, before we go ahead, if you go at the previous ayah again, Ahsant, Abu Muhammad, the previous ayah is being directed to who? Look at the previous ayah. What does the previous ayah say? Am yaquluna aftarah, and I mentioned this, or they say, who? You, one person, Muhammad, you invented it. What is the reply? Qul, say to them. And if taraytuhu, Qul, say, fa'atu bi ashri suwar, and then bring ten surahs like it. Allah speaking to his prophet. He should respond to them with that. But the next verse, it changes to plural. The next verse, look at it. It does not say, so if they, or if they do not respond to you, now the difference is that in English, you is, is used for both singular and plural. If you say you, you don't know, you're speaking to one or two or ten. But in Arabic, فَإِلَّمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا You have the wawul jam'a there, wawul jama'a. So if they, don't respond, if they don't respond to you in plural, meaning you Muslims who claim this Quran is from Allah, فَعَلَمُوا then you should know in plural, not just the prophet. You should know what? Annama that surely unzila bi ilmillah that this Quran was revealed with the knowledge of Allah. Wa an and also you should know what? La ilaha illahu. There is no true God. There is no deity who is supposed to be worshipped except Him. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And at the end, you should ask them, then won't you become Muslims? Can we, can we close that door, please? Again, Allah gives a challenge to the Prophet wasallam. They say you invented it. Then tell them, bring ten surahs like it and call whoever you want. Now, normally speaking, the next verse will be what? So if they don't respond to you, Muhammad, in your claim, in, uh, if they don't respond to you in their claim, then you should know that this is truly the word of Allah. 
But Allah does not say that. Allah says this is all for all of you. Because this claim of the Prophet ﷺ is our belief. That these are the words of Allah. And this also shows you what? That the Quran is the true message of Allah for every time, every era, every generation. Every time you'll have people who say, no, it's not the words of God. It's just a fabrication of Muhammad and he was a good person. It's close to poetry. Then give them the same challenge. Bring something like it. If they can't do it, then you should know as a Muslim, all of you. Now this is very important. Look at this. What is the challenge? Guys, what is the challenge? Bring 10 surahs like that of the Quran. They cannot respond to that challenge. What should that tell you? What should that tell you? Allah says, that should tell you Annama unzila bi ilmillah, that this book is really, has really been revealed with the knowledge of Allah. This is the words of Allah. And there's something else that should tell you though. Wa, and the wa is for what? And. And what? An la ilaha illahu, there's no true God except him. So the miracle nature of the Quran, the challenge of the Quran, it should lead you to be firm in your faith of Tawheed. It should lead you to be firm in knowing what? That he is truly the only God. You understand that? And then Allah says, say to them, فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Now are you ready to become people who submit to Allah? Because when someone challenges you, and you fail in the challenge, it means you're what? It means you're what? You're defeated. Right or wrong? You're defeated. If you're defeated, you're supposed to do what? To submit. This is the truth. This is the truth. Facts. You prove a fact with a fact, like we say, a proof with a proof, and evidence with an evidence. Now we gave you evidence. These are the words of Allah because you cannot bring something like them. And if you want to accept the challenge, don't bring a book like it. Bring just 10% of it. Now you cannot do that. Then what is left for you? Accept it. This is the book of Allah. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ then are you going to submit and accept? That is the challenge. The Quran came to challenge. You have to know that. The Quran, the message of Islam, is challenging. It is challenging to those who refuse to accept it without any proofs. That is why Allah, he challenged. قُلْ هَاتُ بُرْهَانَكُمْ Say to them, bring your proofs. If what you have is true, then bring your proofs because we are bringing proofs. You understand? And this should lead you to know what? That these are truly the words of Allah. The Quran is the speech of Allah uncreated. Allah spoke it in a way which befits his majesty. And he gave it to his prophet. Either through Jibreel or directly sometimes. That's what we believe. It's the words of Allah. It's not a narration. A narration of what was said. Like the Bible they have today. It's a narration of what was supposed to have been said. And in fact, there's no uh, a, a proper trace to, you'd expect the Bible to come from Jesus, right? Because he's the prophet of God. It's been written by people who are not known who wrote it. Nobody knows who wrote the Bible. If you didn't know that, you should know today. Nobody knows who wrote the Bible. The Bible which we have today, nobody knows. But the Quran, we have the trust. It goes all the way back to the Prophet so saying it's been preserved generation after generation. The same book, the same wording in every single part of this universe. And whoever says it's not, then there's the challenge. Bring something like it. You cannot then accept it is the words of God. Accept it is the words of God. Because the truth cannot be defeated. Every human being knows that. And soon we'll be talking about the nature of the human being. Every human being knows there's facts which you are created to know. You know that up is not down. White is not black. Right is not wrong. Cold is not hot. Right or wrong? Yeah? 
And you also know that truth cannot be falsehood at the same time. So if this is not falsehood, it has to be the truth. So if they don't respond to your call of bringing 10 verses like that of 10 surahs of this, of this Quran, like that of this Quran, then you should know that these are truly the words of Allah and that he alone is supposed to be worshipped and that means what? You submit. You submit. If they are the words of Allah, what is for us human beings to do? Submit. And that is the beauty of Islam and the beauty of Islam is submission. Allah says during Ramadan, don't eat from this time to this time. You don't say why. Maybe we should eat vegetables only. No. These are his words that the Lord who created me and you. Then okay, we are submitting. It's that simple. So and this point is very important for us to understand. As Muslims, when you give da'wah to non-Muslims, they don't understand this point. So they'll ask you, why do the women have to wear hijab? Why do the women, maybe they get a less share of inheritance? Why do you have to pray five times a day? Why and why and why and why and why? Why is riba interest haram? Why and why and why? If you start arguing with those issues extensively, you will lose the point. But if you take them to the main point, the main point is, do you affirm that there's a God who created you? If he affirms, yes, I have a God who created me, then you should say to him or her, then do we have any other way other than accepting his message? If he says, how come I know this message is his, God's? Then you say, okay, this is the challenge. Can you bring something like this Quran? which spoke about the embryonic stages 1400 years ago. It spoke about geology 1400 years ago. It spoke about um, a, a, a anatomy 1400 years ago. Can you disprove this is not God's word? Coming from someone, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi who was illiterate. He didn't even know how to write his own name. Now he accepts. He says, okay, then this is God's word. He has accepted he has a God. He has accepted this is God's word. Now he is ready for submission. Now you tell him anything. You have to wake up for Fajr. He'll be the first one in the masjid. Do you understand? When you give da'wah, you go back to the source. The main issue, the main point is, do you affirm there's only one God and he alone was supposed to worship? If he says yes, then everything else falls in place. And everything else is easier. This is very important, very, very important. Because you can't debate with someone who doesn't think on the same level like you. For you, this is submission. It's so easy. But for him or her, praying five times a day, I cannot take interest. I cannot steal anymore. I stayed away from drugs and partying. It's hard for him to understand. Why? Because he doesn't have the foundation. But if the foundation is there, it is easy for him to accept it. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ That's why ask, Allah asks them, then are you going to submit? If you accept, it's, you cannot prove his challenge wrong. You cannot bring a Quran like it. This is God's words. Are you going to submit or not? Now moving on. Moving on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now says, Remember we said one of the main messages of this surah again is what? Affirming the hereafter and what is coming. That there's always two groups. A group successful and a group which is wretched. A group which will be happy, a group which will be sad. Allah says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا نُوَفِّ إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, Man, whoever, Man is for whoever, كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا Whoever wants, his main goal is the life of this world. Hayat dunya the life of the dunya, the world. Wazi nataha, 
and its adornments, the pleasures of this world. Whoever he chooses that his main concern, his main goal is the life of this world and its adornments. Because it is adorning, it is beautiful, it is attractive. What will be for them? Allah says, these people, نوفي إليهم أعمالهم فيها We will repay for them their actions in this world completely, full repayment. وهم فيها and them in this world لا يبخسون they will never be deprived. Whoever wants the life of this world and its adornments, we shall fully repay them for their deeds here, meaning this world, and they'll never be deprived. But, Ula'ika, the next verse now, 16, Ula'ika, they are those, they are the ones who will be for what? لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ In the Akhirah, in the next life, they will not have except the hellfire. وَحَبِتُ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا And lost is what they used to do in this world. Whatever they did in this world, because they only wanted this world, there it will be lost. It won't benefit them. وَبَاتِلُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ It will be worthless. After Allah says, فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Are you going to submit? Allah now brings us and tells us, okay, this is the reality of submission and its fruit. Meaning, if you don't want to submit, you want what? The life of the world and its pleasures. Then you will get what you want. You'll get what you want. And in fact, you'll not be deprived. Look at that. Allah says that. You'll not be deprived. That's what you want. You'll be given that. But you will be from those who in the, ha in, the, in, the, in the hereafter you will only have the hellfire because whatever you used to do in the world because you used to do it only for the worldly gain it will be lost there it won't benefit you this verse Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma he said this verse is talking about the people of Riyadh the people who do good actions to show off. Instead of doing them with ikhlas, sincerity for Allah alone. That Allah gives them what they want here in this world. The people who do good actions, they pray, they give charity, they read the Quran, but they only do it to show off, to earn fame, to earn people's pleasure. Those people... Allah gives them the pleasure they wanted in this world. People will talk about them. People will praise them. But in the hereafter, they will only have the hellfire. And whatever they used to do, which used to be salah, they used to pray, they used to fast, they used to give maybe, they used to read Quran. But they only did it for the people to praise them, to show off. They did not do it for Allah. In the hereafter, it won't help. He said, this verse is talking about the people of Riyadh. We know the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said what? أَوَّلُ مَنْ تُسَعَرْ بِهِمُ النَّارِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ The first people who they'll be thrown into the hellfire in the, in the day of judgment is what? Three people. Three kinds of people. رَجْلٌ أَمَانٌ أُسْتُشْهِدَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ He was killed as a martyr fighting for the sake of Allah. And Allah brings him. Allah brings him. And this verse, this hadith is also mentioning something we'll discuss very soon. Just listen to this hadith very carefully. Allah will bring this person and ask him, فَيُعَرِّفَهُ بِنِعْمَهِ أَوْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ Allah will remind him the favors he gave him in this world. Didn't I give you this? Didn't I give you this? Didn't I? And he'll say, yeah, he'll say, yes, of course, all of that you gave me, my Lord. Why? Because everyone will speak to Allah in the Day of Judgment. Everybody. 
So Allah will make him confess to the, to the favors he gave him, the, 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 the blessings he gave him. And then Allah will ask him, فَمَاذَا عَمِلْتَ بِهَا How do you use those blessings I gave you? فَيَقُولِ الْسَيْءِ قَتَلْتُ فِيكَ حَتَّى اسْتُجْهِدْ He'll say, I fought for your sake until I was killed as a martyr, a shaheed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, كَذَبْتْ You are lying. إِنَّمَا قَتْلَلْتَ الْيُقَالُ جَرِيءٍ you only fought so that people can say he's brave, he's courageous, he's a warrior. وَقَدْ قِيلْ And it was said for you. You got that praise in the world. فَيُؤْمَرْ بِهِ فَيُسْحَبْ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ لَا جَهَنَّمُ لَا ذَمِّ اللَّهِ And Allah commands the angels and they drag him on his face to the hellfire. وَرَجْلُ الْقَرَأَ الْقُرْآنُ وَتَعَلَّمَ عِلْمُ وَعَلَّمَ عِلْمًا And someone who used to know the Qur'an very well and he used to have knowledge. And Allah brings him and he makes him confess to the blessings he gave him. Didn't I give you this and this and that? And I gave you knowledge and this and that. He says, yes, you gave me, my Lord. How do you use them? He says, I taught for your sake. And I read Quran for your sake. And Allah says, Kadabt, you are lying. You only spoke so that people can say, wow, he's a great speaker, he's a great scholar. And you only recited Quran in that good way so people can praise you. And they said that in the world. You got that. You got that praise you wanted. This is what the verse is talking about. In this world, you will get your actions. And you will not be deprived. People will praise you. But on that day of judgment, Allah says, you lied. You only, you only taught the knowledge and read Quran so that people can praise you. So it can be said, he is a scholar. He is a qari. And it was said for you. Now he's been commanded, drag him on his, on his face into the hellfire. وَرَجْلٌ قَدْ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمَالِ And someone who Allah gave wealth, Allah blessed him. And Allah makes him confess. He didn't give you this, I gave you that, I gave you that. He says, yes, my Lord. How do you use it? He says, مَا تَرَكْتُ سَبِيلًا تُحِبُّ وَتُنْفَقْ فِيهِ إِلَّا أَنْفَقْتُ فِي سَبِيلِكَ There's no path which you love, oh my Lord, that people should spend except that I spent on that, meaning orphans, helping uh, people going for hajj, helping people who are poor. I used to give for your sake, and Allah says, Kadabt, you're lying. You only gave liuqalu jawad. You only gave so people can say, oh, he's so generous. And you got that in the world. And today he's going to the hellfire. وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ In the here after they only have the hellfire. And what they used to do, which is good actions, it will be worthless. Why? Because it was not amalun salih. It was not amalun salih. It was not amalun salih, a righteous action. What is a righteous action? The righteous action is the purpose of why Allah created us. Remember last week? وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah created us to test us. We'll have the best actions. And when is an action considered best or good for it to be accepted by Allah? It has to have two conditions, we said. Number one, sincerity for Allah. You only do it for Allah. You, only, you don't do it so people can praise, you know. Only for Allah. And number two, it has to be done according to the guidance of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa any action in Islam which lacks one of those two conditions, it becomes like this. Especially if it lacks ikhlas and it's done upon riyah to show off. So this is the tafsir of Ibn Abbas. He said this ayah was about the mura'un, those people who show off. Now something though, if you look at this ayah, Anas bin Malik, radiallahu anhu, he said this was revealed for the disbelievers. Disbelievers. Those people who don't care about the hereafter. All they care about is the, the dunya. Those who only care about the dunya. And this is shown, by the way, in other ayahs of the, of the Qur'an also, by the way. 
suratu Yunus, suratu Syura, suratu Isra. So many surahs. Like in the, see, see, look at this one. What does it say? Look at it very carefully. It says, Man kana yuridul hayat dunya zinataha. Whoever wants, he desires the life of this world and its enjoyment. That's his desire. What will be the result? What does Allah say? We'll give him what he desires. They'll never be deprived. They will get what they want. But, and this is what you said is very important. The Quran explains itself. And this is something you have to know about the whole Sharia of Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah. There are texts which are mutlaq, meaning they're general absolute. And then there are texts which are muqayyad, meaning they specify those which are absolute. They specify them. The ayah in Surah Al-Isra, it specifies this one. It specifies this one. The ayah in Surah Al-Isra, what does it say? Man kana yuridu la'ajilata, ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha'u liman nurid. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ إِسْلَاهَا مَذْمُومًا مَدْحُورًا Whoever wants this life, Al-Ajila, this life, in Surah Al-Isra, Allah says what? Whoever wants this life, we will give him, عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا We will give him this world, مَا نَشَاءُ What we want. لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ To the one whom we want. And then his end, of course, like in this verse, then he'll go to the hellfire, he'll go into the hellfire, blameworthy, and he is humiliated. This one is general. Allah says what? We'll give him what he want. But in Isra, Allah says no. We will give what we want to him, not everything he wants. And also not all of them will get what they want. That is why someone, sometimes we find someone, all he loves is the dunya, yet he never gets it. Yet, he never gets it. Or, he only gets a bit. And those are the ones, now if you go to the next verse, if you go to the next verse, I forgot the password here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Shura, by the way, Surah Al-Shura, so that we know what it says, it says, Man kana yuridu al-harth al-akhira, nazid lahu fi harthi. Whoever whose desire is the life of the next life will increase for him. As we know, every action you do, it is multiplied by 10, up to 70, up to 100 times, up to 700 times. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا مَا لَهُ فِي الْأَخْرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيبِ There's a very beautiful hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says, Whoever wakes up every day, Whoever wakes up, مَنْ كَانَ نِيَّتُ وَمَنْ كَانَ تِنِيَّتُ وَمَنْ كَانَ هَمُّهُ at dunya, whoever wakes up and his main concern is the dunya, whoever lives like this, yani, and whoever wakes up and his main concern is the akhirah, whoever lives like that, this is his principle of life. What is your main concern? That is the question. Everybody can only answer for himself or herself. What is your main concern? Ask yourself that. What is my main concern? Is it the dunya or the akhirah? And it's before we go to the hadith. This is what the eye is telling us. If this is you, then you know the end is not good. The Prophet says, Man kanat il akhiratu hammuhu. The one whose akhirah is his main concern. Jamma Allahu shamla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his matters easy in this world. Allah makes things easy, meaning you are focused. 
not easy meaning you won't have hardships no everybody has to have hardships in this world but you'll be focused because you know your, what is your goal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 